Welcome to the program. This is a uh, Rema Hour, and we have some very interesting updates to give you and some announcements to make. First of all, I don't know how many of you might have heard that Brother Kote died on Monday, about 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a big shock to many of us, and some of you I know will be even shocked as we are, because I believe that many of you have not heard the news as yet. We were actually given a rude awakening when we understood about Kote, whom we hadn't seen for a while, had passed away on Monday morning at 10 o'clock. Our condolences go out to his daughter and to other members of his family. He will be surely missed in Rima because anything he wanted something done as far as Lifting anything of concern, it could depend upon Brother Kute. He was very, very active in building of our church building, the phase that we occupy now, phase one. He was there with the men, working long hours on weekends, and even after he came from his own work in the afternoon, and he has made significant contribution to our ministry. And we want to thank God for the life that he lived and to thank God for him. And I want to ask you to keep on praying for his daughter and for other members of his family. We are going to be having the funeral this coming weekend, to be exact, tomorrow Friday. They will, because of the COVID-19 restrictions, that we can congregate. We have arranged, or the, the family members have arranged, that there will be a viewing of the body tomorrow in Simpson's funeral home on the Eastern Mineral Imbarataria. You know where it is? At Lavantil, rather, sorry. Um, Simpson's funeral home in the Eastern Mineral Road in Lavantil between the other four and six in the afternoon. That is for the viewing of the body. And so you members and friends who need to have a look at the remains of Brother Kute can get down there between the other four and six. Of course, I mean to avoid the, the actually congregating. I'm sure that they'll be there to regulate how many people can go in at, at each time. And then the funeral takes place at the same church or the funeral home agency on Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be there taking charge of that funeral service. And again, we have to have no more than five people, but we will actually do our bit and make sure that we give Brother Kute his memory, a good send-off with a word that can be a blessing to the members of his family and his loved ones. So keep in praying, and let me on your behalf, members of Rima, extend our condolences to his daughter, and hoping that God's strength will be made perfect in her time of weakness. Now here is a very important piece of information. As long as this COVID-19 thing lasts, we are going to be making a little shift to our program every Thursday starting this afternoon I'll be emphasizing deliverance I'll be preaching a message of deliverance and praying for people who are sick and who have needs now we will want to have your cooperation I want you to feel free to call in and leave with us your requests, either on your behalf or somebody else's behalf. If it is not offensive, and you can send the person's name, so we can call, we won't call the person's name on the radio on 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 the or on the Facebook. I don't mean that, but we will actually be able to pray in our own prayer. And then in the, on the program, on Facebook and YouTube, we will pray specifically for that particular situation. But whether we get the person's name or not, 
we are going to be praying for the sick and for needs and for problems after every sharing on a Thursday, starting on this afternoon. So the emphasis on Thursday is deliverance. And the emphasis on Sunday is going to be intensive teaching. So this coming Sunday, we are going to be talking about justification, one of the tremendous doctrines of the Christian faith found in the book of Romans and references in other epistles. And I want you to call your friend, let them know that something special is going to be taking place on Sunday and every Sunday and every Thursday. Sunday is the teaching of some doctrinal faith and truth. And on Thursday, it is going to be deliverance. So may God bless you. Now, also, I want you to excuse my juggling of our time. But why I'm doing this is because our focus is to really meet the need of our members, first and foremost. I announced last week that the office will be opened only Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They brought to my attention that some folk were somewhat inconvenienced because some folk came on Tuesday, some folk can come only on Thursday. So it was suggested to me by a member of the staff who had no problem making himself available that he will be available every day. Monday to Friday for the prescribed time, 8.30 until 1 o'clock. So those of you who call in want to drop food stuff, meet the need for people. To serve them. So bear in mind and pass the news on that the office will be open Monday to Friday every morning from 8 o'clock, 8.30 in, in the morning until 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Are you ready for the word? Today, I'm going to be taking the first message in the area of deliverance. and entitled, Make Your Dream a Reality. Make your dream a reality, not somebody else's dream. Each of us has a dream. Matter of fact, the person who does not dream will acquire nothing, will accomplish nothing. From a time we were small, you had a dream. You hear like a child say, I want to be a pilot. I, want, I was out to be a guest speaker at the kindergarten graduation last year, two years ago. And I was just simply blown away. I mean that, I mean, it, my heart was so filled with praise and worship. The tiny children, each of them was asked to declare on the platform what they want to be. And to hear some children say, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a geologist. I want... I mean, I was almost blown away. That child, that age, knew in his heart or her heart what she wanted to be. She had a dream that she wanted to be a nurse. Something wanted to be a pilot. Something wanted to be an astronaut. I want to be all type of things. And I was really taken aback. So we all have dreams. And we should never come to a point in our life, even when we become adults, to lose our dream. Keep your dream alive. But sometimes the dream can remain just where it is, a dream. But do you know, according to the word of God, you can graduate from the realm of a dream into a realm of reality. And this is what I want to share this afternoon. Make your dream a reality. And I'm going to read from the book of Mark's Gospel, St. Mark chapter 5, and read a story. 
And a certain woman, from verse 25, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but the clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Let's stop there for a time being. You can read on down to verse 34. But we stop there. This is a story that we know quite well. It is called the woman with the issue of blood. Now, this is the story in a nutshell. Here was the woman having a hemorrhage for 12 years, nonstop, a consistent, persistent problem, and had done everything she could have done, gone to every physician that she might have known, spent her life savings, and has spent everything she had, whether at the point maybe of bankruptcy, hoping to be better, but she became worse. But a time came when she heard about Jesus, and she made up her mind that she will one day go to see Jesus. And when she go to see him, she will be better. She formulated in her mind what she will do, how she will do it, and she knew that if she got the opportunity to do that, she would be better. Well, eventually, she got the opportunity. She heard about Jesus. She went where he was. She did what she could have done. She touched his clothes, and she was healed instantly. And this was so profound that this is one of the two instances when Jesus referred to faith as a person of great faith. The first one was the man in the book of Matthew chapter 8, the centurion, and this woman. Only on two occasions, Jesus spoke of people having great faith. Now that, in a nutshell, is the story, is the incident. I want to go beyond that and to ask ourselves, what is in that for us to learn? Now, the Bible was not put together to compile narratives for people's entertainment. The Bible makes it quite clear that Jesus did many more things than are recorded in the Bible. John says, if they all were to be recorded, the book that would have been contained, could not, the world rather, could not have contained the books that could have been written. But he said, whatsoever is recorded, it is enough to make us believe that Jesus is the Christ and that believing we might have life through his name. In other words, the Bible is made quite clear that whatever is recorded in the Bible is for our benefit. That we can learn something. Not just to be entertained by it or just to glorify some man or to glorify some woman and to put them on a pedestal of admiration. No, it is for your benefit. And that's why I begin by saying to you, we need to get some things straightened out. One, that this is not a parable. Neither is it an illustration. This is not an allegory neither. This is factual. It 
actually, literally took place. There was this woman, and there was Jesus, and there was the woman who was really sick, and she did what she could have done, and she got what she wanted to get. And I want to share with you, this woman had a dream. First of all, I want to bring to you some nuggets. What can we glean out of this whole scenario? First of all, we see the passion of the woman to get well. She had a passion to be well. After all, she was sick for 12 years. And the Bible tells you that she had gone to many physicians. When the Bible says she suffered many things, it doesn't mean that they took advantage. It means that she tried. She applied many methods or means or she tried different avenues. That is what it means. She actually did what she could do. In other words, by the woman's action, she was saying, I am not going to sit back here and die. I'm not going to relax and say, kiss sirrah, sirrah, whatsoever will be, will be. I am going to try, try, try until I get better. As far as she's concerned, the thing about death was nowhere in her agenda. Giving up was nowhere in her agenda. She went for another opinion and another opinion and another opinion because your Bible tells you she suffered many things of many physicians, which means she went to physician A and he did what he could do and he gave her the prognosis, but she said, okay, I'll try Mr. B for his opinion. I'm always going to seek another opinion. I'm not going to put a full stop on say what is done. I'm not going to lose my hope. And my friends, you know something? That is very, very important. She never gave up hope of being better one day. She was always seeking another opinion. And she lack of response did not discourage her. She spent all that she had. And I've been spent all that she had. And I've been heard from every physician. Guess what happened? She grew worse. She did not get better. There was no physical change for the better in her situation to give her hope, to give her encouragement. But that did not make the difference. What is important, beloved, is that she had the first ingredient to get her on the road to recovery. And that is a passion to be well. You need to have that passion. Never ever give up. Never ever put a full stop to your life. Never fall and remain upon your back and say there's no way out. As long as there's life, beloved, there's hope. Never give up your hope. We have heard this says so many times, where, the, where, the, where there's a will, there is a way. And this woman is speaking to you. She's speaking to me that I will never allow, no matter how dark and how gloomy and how negative is the prognosis, I am not going to abandon my hope of being better. You know, we are talking about believing God and coming to God by faith. You could never have faith where there is no hope. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. So there must be hope. And this woman, she kept her hope alive. She had a passion to be well one day. Secondly, she was a seeker and a listener. It seemed to me that because of her seeking attitude, because of her getting up and looking for an answer, because of her hope that somewhere 
I will find the answer. Somewhere, I will get good news. Somewhere, I will see a way out. She kept making inquiries. And eventually, she was a good listener. The Bible tells you that she heard about Jesus. <laughs> that is so wonderful. She heard about Jesus. And her coming to Lord is because she heard. Now had she sat down at home and just simply roll over waiting for death to come. Had she believed that woman there is no way out of your circumstance. All we can do is to make you comfortable because you're going to die anyhow. You maybe have stage 4 of cancer in your body. That's why you are bleeding. So we want you to know just be comfortable. You're going to die in 6 months. She was not going to buy that. She went and she asked for favor. She asked for opinion. She asked for answers. And by asking, she was a good listener. She heard about Jesus. Because your Bible tells you, she came after she heard. She came because she heard. So she was secondly, a seeker and a good listener. I wonder what did she hear? I believe she heard that he was a compassionate Jesus. I believe she heard he was a man of boundless love. I believe she heard that with him nothing was impossible. I believe that she heard that with him nothing was too difficult. I believe she heard that anyone could touch him. I believe she heard that anyone who touched him was made whole. I believe that she heard it was never too late to believe in him. I believe she heard it was never too late to come to him. I believe she heard that as many as came to him, she will never cast them out. I believe she heard about the miracles. She heard that the healing of the sick. She heard of the cleansing of the lepers. She heard of the opening of blind eyes. She heard of the dead being raised. She heard of the lame who were able to walk. She heard of the demon being cast out. And she heard that the needs of people were met, that the multitudes were fed. I heard that she heard that many were comforted. I believe she heard that many who had given up hope had their hope restored again. And when she heard about Jesus, I don't think that she heard only that he's a, he's a man. He is a Messiah. No. When I said she heard, she became instructed of the character and the ability and the attributes of the man and the ministry and the works of the man and the parables and the miracles she heard. And because of what she heard, she made up her mind, I am going to see him. I am going to see him. She, thirdly, she received instruction from what she heard. She could have said, oh bye. Well, that's good for them. I, I believe what they say, but I mean... I think it's too late for me now. I, I, I don't think I mean he has time with me. I, I, I'm too weak. I am too discouraged. If I had heard it maybe 10 months ago, or maybe last year, you know. No, she got instruction. She allowed what she heard to instruct her. In other words, she's saying, that belongs to me. If it happened to others, it could happen to me. If others receive, I could receive. If others believe, I could believe. If he had compassion and he had mercy upon others, he'd have compassion and mercy upon me. She allowed what she heard to instruct her. What have you heard, beloved? Have you heard about the life of Jesus about his love, about his compassion, about his mercy and his grace, about his faithfulness, about his provision. But you think it belonged to 
everybody else and not you? You think that your case is beyond help? That your case has gone too far? That you have been suffering for too long? And oh, if only you have heard before now, you would have done something about it. You are not correct, beloved. This woman instructs you that it is never too late. She decided, having heard about Jesus, she believed and she made her mind, I'm going to go to see him. He can do it now and he will do it now. Jesus declares in the book of St. Mark chapter 9 to the man, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. And that woman believed that if I could only get there and do certain things, I will be healed. Now, fourthly, we see the nugget of her being self-motivated. According to Matthew's gospel, chapter 9 and verse 21, Matthew says, she said within herself. She said within herself. Yes, she heard about Jesus, but she did not just simply dismiss it and thought it belonged to somebody else, that everybody else was included except herself. She said within herself. In other words, I have gone to the physicians. I have taken the advice. I have taken their medication. I have observed their instructions. I have done what they have told me to do. I believe they have tried their best. But their best efforts have failed. I have become worse. Nothing that they have done has helped me. Now, if I am to be helped, I must take the bull by the horn for myself. The ball is now in my court. I must make up my mind that if I am to get better, it depends upon me. She said within herself. In other words, this woman's healing began before she even went to see Jesus. She made up her mind. I am not building castle in the sky. I'm not eating pie in the sky. She convinced herself. She had something born on the inside. A truth was born, birthed on the inside. A creation took place on the inside. She saw it happening. I will be better if I can only get there and touch his cloth. I will be healed. I'm not going to experiment. I know it will happen. I see myself going there. I see it taking place. I see the outcome. In my mind, healing has taken place already. In my spirit, indomitably, it is created on the inside. She was self-motivated. And beloved, that is where it is at. I often tell people, unless you can see it happening, it is unlikely you will ever make it happen. Beloved, you have to see yourself healed. You have to see yourself well. Yes, I know that you are sick. I know that you are seeing the physical handicap you are in. You are not dreaming. It is real. But you want to be better. You have to see yourself not as a handicap. You want to see yourself not as a limited person. You have to see yourself not limping, not bending down in pain, not groaning. You have to see yourself free. In other words, you have to have imagination. man. You have to see the work being done. You know something? I remembered talking to a young woman. 
And if by chance you're listening to me, you may know I'm talking about you. Don't feel hurt. I'm not going to call your name. But I'm going to use it as an illustration. This young woman came to me one day and said, Pastor Anthony, I make up my mind that this year, it was early in the year, the particular year, in January, I make up my mind that this is my year. I am going to get married this year. Now, she was not a teenager since she was 17 years old. She was a young person, yes. But she thought, after all, man, this is nonsense. I need to get married. And I make up my mind that this is my year. I am going to get married. Pray for me, Pastor Anthony. And I lay my hand upon her. And I prayed. I said, God, I thank you for her faith. I thank you for her resolve. I know that the young man is there already. Now send him and let him be made manifest and let her eyes be open. And when he comes, she'll say to him, yes. Well, <laughs> in less than three months, out of nowhere, this young man came. He belonged to a church also. He proposed. She accepted the proposal. And before the year was ended, I conducted the marriage ceremony. Today they are happily married, a wonderful couple. God has blessed them, blessed them beyond their imagination. Why? Because she saw herself married. She saw herself being proposed to. She saw herself walking up the aisle. She saw me conducting their marriage. And let me make it quite clear. She was not a flirter. So she was floating behind the man. She didn't know who the man was, what going to be. But before three months was over, this man came and proposed, a member of the church. And it couldn't be a better match. Wonderful, respectable, wonderful young man. You have to see it happening, beloved. She said, if I could only get there and touch his clothes, I will be better. In other words, she didn't say, well, I heard what they say. And I'm going to try it out. No, beloved. She was not going to experiment. She was not going to keep her fingers crossed. She knew what the outcome was going to be because she saw it happening. I will take responsibility for my healing. The doctor did their best. I looked to them. I trusted them. But now it is my time. She said within herself, and she did it. Beloved, that is not the story end. But my time is up right now. I will continue this the next week, Thursday. It is exciting. There are many more nuggets I want to bring to you. But I want you to know that the woman got healed because of number one, she actually had a passion to be well. Number two, she was a seeker. Number three, she received instruction from what she saw and heard. And number four, she was self-motivated. She was self-motivated. If I, today, I want to know you can be like her. You might not be bleeding. You might not be physically ill. But there's a need. And I want you to know that right now, Jesus can touch you, heal you, set you free. By right now, you must see yourself being well. See yourself being better. See your problem being solved. See yourself successful in that interview. See yourself being called for a job. See yourself having the victory over that weakness in your life. And as I pray, I want you to raise your hand. Put your hand upon your head, upon your chest. And believe God for your miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus we thank you for the edification from your word. And I pray for every person right now who is praying for a miracle. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that your hand will be extended right now and the Holy Ghost will anoint that place where they are, anoint their body because by the anointing the yoke is destroyed. And grant, O oh God, that the word I speak now will be endorsed by your intervention. 
you foul oppression, you spirit of bondage, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to lose your hold upon that life. I command every obstacle, I command every hurdle to be dismantled. I pull them down. I release the power of the resurrected Christ. I release it now. And I command healing. I command deliverance. I command victory in the name of Jesus. I proclaim it as being done, Father. And I say thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe that prayer from my heart. And I believe that you have received from God. You have seen information on the bottom of your screen. We will be very much delighted to hear from you. Let us hear from you. And let us know that God has done a work in your life. This is the first of many deliverance services we're going to conduct online. And I want you to pass the news around. Let everyone know that deliverance comes to them every Thursday at 530 in the afternoon. God bless you. Thanks for viewing.